Things didn't go the way K-State would have liked them to on Thursday night in the Big 12 quarterfinals. They fall 76-57 to Iowa State. And again, same thing we've talked about a lot of the year. Turnovers, major problem. Non-contributors, major problem. And you were facing an Iowa State team that they made shots tonight. They didn't make shots in Manhattan. Their offense can struggle at times. K-State made it easy on them tonight. They got good looks inside, finished in the paint. They made their free throws. Rob Jones had a big night. And if you're letting Rob Jones torch you, it's going to be tough. I'm Mason Vogt. That's Drew Galloway. Welcome into K-State Online. The Cats fall 76-57, to and their Big 12 tournament is over. And now they're at the peril of the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. Come Sunday, Jerome Tang campaign really hard to get in. We'll see if it works. Uh, Drew, what, what were your takeaways from tonight? I, I think that it, it's just the obvious, and you hit it on the head, turnovers and not making shots. There, there was a point in the game where K-State had six of seven possessions in and a turnover after cutting the game to one. And things really fell apart from that. Case it could never recover. And when you play bad against a good team, this is the kind of thing that happened where you just get ran out of the building. Like it, it wasn't. It wasn't as close as even the final score says. Because the second half, for as good as the second half was last night, this was probably the worst second half Case it's played in a long time. Yeah, it was not good. They they cut it to one at one point. It felt like there was some momentum, but this is kind of what I've talked about a lot this year, where. This team, they do so many other things poorly that games are going to be swung pretty heavily when you don't get favorable officiating. And look, uh, the officiating was putrid tonight. I thought it was, I thought it was terrible. Uh, Jerome Tang gets a technical, another one with tra Chance Moore holding the whistle. What's new? But all this, the refs are not to blame for K-State losing this game. While they were bad, we can say that K-State lost this game on their own and it was in some ways a credit to them, but in some ways a fault that they were still in this game when all this was going on. But eventually, you play too close to the ledge, you're going to get blown over, whether it's something you do or something that the wind does. And K-State played by the ledge with their turnovers and all the other things they did poorly. And the bad whistle at times, it blew them over the edge and it knocked them off and might have knocked off their NCAA tournament chances. So we'll see what comes out of it. But somewhat similar to Cincinnati vibes too where Tyler Perry seemed to be the only guy that was really locked in and doing anything early to try and help you out all around just a poor effort on a night where K-State needed it and we've said that too many times this season yeah I mean uh, Cam Carter was really bad again tonight Arthur Kaluma had flashes where he was good but he was mostly bad it, it's never great when your second best option on offense is Will McNair. That's nothing against Will McNair. It's just that this team's ceiling is so much higher when Arthur Kaluma and Cam Carter are knocking down shots. But nothing really seemed to go right for K-State on the offensive end. They were sped up a lot. Iowa State was being really physical. David Gasson especially was really sped up tonight. So it, it just seemed like one of those nights where the other team is just better than you. And, I, and Iowa State is the much better team. And I, and I think that everybody can agree with that. But it's frustrating to be in this position because you had so many chances this season to not yeah. have to come to Kansas City and win two games. And now that you came to Kansas City and you only won one, you're kind of just waiting. Yep. And Gasson, I think we saw some of the effects of playing a second night in a row for him. He's been banged up, dealing with things lower half. This was going to be a tough night for David Gasson to give you much, so you needed somebody else to step up. And Will McNair, yeah, the scoring's there, but he was really bad at times. Colbert was bad at times. And Jerome Tang wasn't able to press the buttons to get those guys to kind of work each other out. So we'll see what comes about. But at the end of the day, the case could be made for K-State to be an NCAA tournament team. It's actually fairly easy to make the case for K-State as an NCAA tournament team. Jerome Tang did that. But it's also incredibly easy to poke holes in K-State being an NCAA tournament team. And you can say it's as simple as don't lose at Oklahoma State. Don't lose by one at Texas Tech. Don't lose by a bucket at Cincinnati. Don't get blown, up, blown out at home by a mediocre Oklahoma team 73-53. to All of these different things here or there that you could say, don't do this, don't do this, and you'd be in right now not having to kind of beg and hope for what the committee does. So we'll see what comes out of it. There will be more big picture stuff to talk about at the end of the year. Drum Tang kind of brought it up saying, like, you know, November, these guys were adjusting to losing two key rotation guys. And that's true. I, people think that I am the, the voice of 
Oh, Naquan Tomlin wouldn't help this team. Naquan Tomlin would 100% help this team. But it's not a given that they are in better standing even with his help. And my whole point all along has been at some point you just have to figure out how to do well with what you have in front of you. Because Naquan Tomlin was never going to walk through that door this season. Quez Glover, he tried to walk through that door this season. He was hobbled and couldn't do it. You never had those guys. You had to do what you could with what you had. And K-State ultimately is on this razor-thin line where we won't know where they fall until Sunday. Yeah, it, the, the thing that K-State really has going for them is that the bubble is really bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, it... it the, the thing that, though, hurts is that the A-10 is looking like it's going to be a two-bid league now. We can Which get Dayton in, should as, not be in. I was going to say, I we mean, can get into Jamie Dayton being in, but uh, it's looking like that's going to be a two-bid league. Memphis being out already helps. Iowa already being out helps. But you're in a kind of helpless position where you could have helped yourself. Even a close loss tonight, probably you feel better about K-State being in. Yeah. But that that was a very ugly game, and especially the second half for K-State. And, and when you're on the bubble, you kind of think about, does playing this bad hurt yeah. in, in the committee's eyes? But the the other thing that I'll talk about, too, is, like, uh, you know that Jerome Tang feels between, like, the pressure of making it and going to the NIT because he was prepared for the press conference. He came in with a whole note spread in – he dished out all kinds of reasons why K-State should be in. And, and to be honest, when you don't, when you take into everything besides the net, K-State should probably be in. But, yeah. but it, it seems like the net is going to be what ends up holding it back. Yep. We'll see how it goes. We'll follow along with it over at K-State Online. So head over to On3, get full coverage from this game there. Also, football, basketball stuff, all that that you need. And we'll see. Is it NCAA, NIT, or nothing for K-State? We've been asking that question for months. We're going to find out come Sunday afternoon. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason. Both one final time from Kansas City. Cats fall tonight to end their Big 12 tournament experience in the quarterfinals.